Welcome to Phoenix Quill Studio. I'm Dave Jenkins, and I'm here to share some of the tips that I've used for turning a screenplay into a storyboard step-by-step. -step. Today we're going to look at developing our storyboard characters. So to, uh, to develop a character, you really need to have, I, I prefer to have some models, and for a storyboard we're going to have lots of panels with different characters in them. So it's important that you have some idea of what stands out about each character. Now, you can have gobs and gobs of characters, but each one needs to have some something unique about it, especially the hero characters, those characters that are the speaking parts that reoccur in different scenes throughout your film. So what I like to do is find a model from uh, Google Images or a famous actor and find traits that I like about that character or something that stands out to make them unique that will help the person reviewing the storyboards the cinematographer and the crew uh, understand what the character is trying to convey and what uh, what the character represents with just a glance. Now this may have nothing to do with the way that the film is actually cast. So a lot of times if you look back on movies that you enjoy and uh, look at the storyboards and the concept art that was done for them, you'll see that the storyboard characters are very, very generic and do not fit the final actor at all, but the framing of the shots generally lines up, depending on how closely the storyboard artist was allowed to be involved with the cinematography plan. So uh, I'm going to go over to Google, so I'm going to fade out my little title here. And we'll be doing some image searches. So we go to Google, good old Google, and let's do a search for uh, a geeky character. Uh, on my thumbnailing video that you can see on YouTube, uh, I had uh, Matthew Vogler, which is a character from a screenplay that I was working on with a friend of mine, set in a fantasy world. He's about 17 years old, kind of bookish, a bit of a nerd, and we had, when I was doing some doodling, some uh, concept development for that script, when I went looking for an actor, I realized that there was a pretty prominent actor now that fits this model. His name is Michael Sarah, And I hadn't seen many movies with Michael Sarah in them before. But he has a great look. So I can take this and drag it into my graphics program. And I can go about this several ways. I can take, uh, create a new layer on my drawing program and pick a brighter color and just try to identify, whoops, switch the tool over to pen instead of uh, flood fill. Oops, too big. And I like his hair, it's pretty moppy. He's a little bit older in this than I think my character is, so I'm gonna age him, or age him down a little bit. And this is just a way to get the basic shape in your head. All of this is basically just to get character traits loaded into your mind. So when you get down to the smaller details, so if we turn this off, let's insert another layer in between the two of them. This will be kind of paper. And then I can flood fill that. There. So see how easy that is? I've just done some simple tracing. This doesn't require any real drawing skills. You're just loading the images from your hand and your brain or your from hold on, let me pick the right color here. Ah, I'm drawing on the white layer, aren't I? Yes. Okay. Back to the no top layer. So you're you're basically just loading them into your head. Getting your hand comfortable with drawing the shape. So he's got a unique nose. So let's go with the eyebrows here coming in an angle. I'm going to draw kind of a pointy nose. And I'm going to go a little bit more cartoony on his mouth. And he's got some pretty prominent angular eyebrows. But he's got these big doe eyes, so let's go with even bigger. And you'll notice if you play around with some of these, if you go to the 
animation sites and the cartooning sites and look at how they draw things and how they simplify things. So let's go with a little uh, Adam's apple. And elongate his neck a little bit. Make him a little bit thinner than he is, than the actor is here. And see how quite quickly we have some basic traits. Uh, I like that. So there's one sample. Let's take this sample. I'm going to change the colors to the top layer. I'm going to adjust that to black. And I'm going to erase my little doodles here on uh, in red. I'm not playing at a super high resolution. It's really not necessary. And I'm going to go up to Layers, Merge All, and flatten this thing out. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to move it over to my other doodle. And I'm going to paste it as a new layer. So we've got one head here. And now, <coughs> for the face, let's zoom in and play with some different angles. So this is like we you would see if you do a search online for model sheet. You'll see this is how they break, I mean they're, they have a whole different system of creating characters, but this is one way that I like to start with a base character and then develop the features, what features are going to be important for this character. So I'm going to try and redraw them now and break down the basic shapes. So we've got his hair, and this is trying to simplify so that when we zoom out, you can still see what the character is doing. And I need, for me at least, I need to have some traits that are repeatable, so that I don't have to look if uh, I don't have to look back at the same piece of art, and he, he's only drawable from one angle. I want him to be drawable from any angle, which means I need to know some of the basic traits of the character. So he we usually start with the shape of the head, and that's basically a for this guy, I'm going with something a little squarer but it's usually a ball, see, ball drawn through. And then I like to think of the face as kind of hanging off the front of that ball, and it comes down to the chin. So our character has a pretty round chin and a pretty round jaw. In fact, he's got wide cheekbones up at the top that come down to his rounded jaw. And then we've got the smile. He's a warm guy, so this is going to look different than our last tracing, but that's the point. We're developing what's unique about this character. I'm going to make the eyes a little bit bigger. Go with that standard tin tin round look. And then the nose. Let's go with the nose. Go with a little bit rounder. And just hint at the bottoms here. And I'm going to do just the corner of the pupils and leave a little bit of area notched for the whites of the eyes. And instead of having his kind of cynical eyes, eyebrows here, you know how they kind of go up and come to a point, which is, you know, if you have a character that does that, that's, you know, that's going to be an older character. I'm going to go with something a little younger. So I'm going to go with more playful arched eyebrows. Not that different. And see, I like how his hair is kind of a mop off to the side. So if I remember this shape, which is coming from this part, so let me highlight these. We've got a part here. These are the basic features. So we're going to go part, and then kind of a piece of paper folded over look. Almost a hand. And then we have another one, and it's got a crease here and it comes flopping over the sides of his head. And then we've got these big sideburns. we got the eyebrows. And see how his, we have his mop here? Let's do the same on this side. And I'm going to do a little bit back here. So this is a basic model sheet for this new character. Now this is Michael Sarah. And 
this is Matt. Okay, so they're similar but not the same. Now, I'm going to simplify this some more by breaking down, okay, his nose. Let's go with his nose comes to a point here. Just a straight wedge. Let's switch back to black. Color this in. And I'm going to try not to, I'm going to emphasize the fact that his cheeks are kind of round. He's not overweight, but he's still got some baby fat. I'm going to draw the ear here. And I'm going to go back and delete, erase some of these lines. I'm just going to pick white, hit control, and then size up the paintbrush just a little bit. And erase some of these guidelines that I've drawn to point out where things were. And you can trace over this. With layers and graphics programs, it's really amazing what you can do. You've got as an unlimited number of onion skins. However much your memory can take in your computer and keep it running without crashing on you. That's how many onion skins you can do. Onion skins are these fake or these, you know, artificial layers of clear. So if I go underneath this in layers and graphics programs, I can take this and go, okay. This is layer two. Oh, I don't want to do that one. Layer one. See? So, you can do as many of those layers in between as you want and build up and get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. But, I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to move on to another angle. So, these traits. I'm going to switch my pen over, go back to the top layer, and see if I can draw our little Matthias here from the side. So we're starting with the same squarish head. You know, you can always draw these lines over. So we're going to draw these lines over. This is a, I learned this from drafting. You can just take any object and turn it by matching the, the lines all the way across, right? So you can also do that with what's called a guideline. If you have a program that can do this, you can do guides. So I could bring the top of his head over here and draw one across for his eyes, and one for the end of his nose, one for his mouth, another one for his chin. <sighs> and then go back and take the pen and go, okay, here's, here's his head, here's the skull, and you guys come here, so we're going to do a little notch. And his nose is going to go from here to here, so we're going to draw just a little line. And we remember he's got kind of a wedgy nose, so we're going to wedge that. Comes to a bit of a point. And we're going to draw his eyes nice and big. And map out his ears, just real basic. And now we remember we've got this sideburn, so that's going to cover some of this. And then we're going to go back to this hair. It's going to be this part on his hair right here. It's going to be on the other side of his head running on that side. So we've got his forehead starts to show up right about here. So let's say it comes out from the back here. We've got that same shape, and it's going to go there and then hang over. So that's this, this crease right here is the same line. So then we go to this part, which is on this side of his head. We connect it. So it's the same kind of hand shape. Imagine if this was like a thumb here and then a hand sitting over the top of his head, right? So we've got a thumb here and then a knuckle, a knuckle, a knuckle, knuckle, curving, kind of grasping his head. <coughs> It's just an easy way to shorthand these key image traits, these things that make the character stand out for you. And then we'll draw some hair back here. And we know it's a little a little loose, a little moppy. Here's where we're exploring the character. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You can always redo it. You can copy this, move it over, and add a mustache. You can do whatever you want to 
make the character really unique. But since this is a, a lead character, we're going to need to spend a little bit of time developing that character so that when people see it, they can quickly grasp who it is. You know, this doesn't look like a hard-bitten character. This doesn't look like a mean character. This is kind of a dopey, maybe a little bit backwards, maybe a little bookish character. So, we're going to go with the cheeks down here. We've got the nose. Let's do a smile again. And I'm clearly not the best artist in the world, by any means. You don't have to be to do to develop your story idea. You just have to be able to turn the head around a little bit and give the cinematographer an idea of where the people are going to be placed on the screen. Because they're dealing with two dimensions too. They're dealing with that simple frame. You know, they have to get everything within that box. Just like you're watching this box right now. There's rules to how this is laid out. And when you're developing storyboards, it's a good idea to have clarity. And you don't need, like I say, you don't need to be the perfect artist. You just have to give it a try, you know. The, the thing that holds you back is that you're not trying, or you haven't done it yet. So in putting these tutorials together, I'm trying to encourage people to give it a try. It's not that hard, and it's actually really fun, you know. What better way to spend an afternoon? Turn the TV off. Well, if you have to watch TV, make sure you have a drawing pad. And sketch. Learn to sketch quickly. Learn to sketch fast. As you see things, try and sketch the characters, try to sketch the costumes and the body poses. There's a, uh, a really great book by uh, one of the Disney uh, instructors. He taught the animators how to capture gestures and do all those great cartooning traits that they put into movies like Snow White and uh, Cinderella and all of the golden age of Disney. And his name was Walt Stanchfield. So go look for Walt Stanchfield. See if you can find some of his lessons online or find his book on Amazon. Uh, it's just great for gestures. And I, I've studied it a little bit, but I'm, he's just a genius. His ability to take uh, a few lines and convey a whole emotion is just fantastic. That's, that's a master. But we poor little amateurs can learn a lot from the masters. Just any of their little, like... Tiny tips can, you know, multiply the quality of our work quite quickly because we have so far to go. And from their perspective, a little bit of uh, a little bit of lubrication along this process can make it so much smoother for us. You know, these little tips and tricks save us all the trouble of having to figure it out ourselves. That's why I love reading and love studying this stuff. I never want to stop learning. Okay, so there's two angles. You, generally you want to be able to do the head in several different angles. You can download model sheets, You can, uh, which are basically just a, a series of shots where you've got the head at a three-quarter, the head straight on, Just a generic head. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. This is going to be the basis for most shots. So when you're thumbnailing, you really only need this. And if I have this character and a head shape, I can do the head shape and then draw some basic outline of his silhouette. And we've got his head, right? So we know which character this is. This is not going to be the character that he's traveling with that maybe has... You know, hair pulled back. Dangling down a little bit. And a little bit more thin. And luscious lips. And oh, it's, it's a girl. Well, hello there. She doesn't look very happy to see me. I better stop joking about her. Anyway, it's all based on the same, you know, all humans basically have the same head shape. We're all, our skulls are very similar, which is why they have to have forensics people to figure out who's who and what's what. I mean, if you study the biology well enough, you can tell a lot of the person's life from that, but I haven't studied it. <sighs> Another thing to learn, but, you know, forensics people and doctors, they can tell you if it's a male or a female just by looking at the skull. 
I would go by just size, of course, because people's heads are different sizes, but she's glaring at me. I have better let her go. She seems kind of perturbed. Alright. So, basic head angles, basic head shapes. So, let's take a look at another shot for Mr. Sarah. We can go to image. Image searches are great for finding materials. When I was a kid, you know, I didn't have Google image search to go by. I would have to find magazines and go to the library and look them up in books. But kids these days, they've got the opportunity to, you know, find a picture anyway. Do whatever they want with it. You could take pictures, you know, load pictures to your iPhone. They can morph pictures. It's, it's amazing what they've got now. But you still need some old school. That's a good one for straight on. He looks kind of, he looks different there. He did something, put on a little bit of weight here, something. That's a good expression. And being able to capture different expressions, if you get somebody who's famous enough, I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, if you get somebody who's really famous, like Mr. Sarah here, you can find lots of different expressions. Better if you've got a collection of photos. If you're going to use a, a non-superstar like this, you know, if you're going to go find somebody that's a um, man on the street, try and find something with several different angles and different expressions, like a, you know, a photo album or a uh, series of shots, or you can, you know, take shots off a of video. If you've got a home video, you can do what the animators do, which is leave a mirror next to your desk and make sure that you can capture any expression. Here, we've got a nice kind of a goofy smile. He's really good at that, that, playing the awkward. I don't know what that is. He doesn't look... He looks like he's had some bad work done. Let's play around with this character a little bit. So here we have Mr. Stallone, and he's he's aging. So let's call this the wagon driver, okay? I'm going to resize this so I've got a little bit better resolution. I'm going to size it up. Lock aspect ratio, change percentage here. Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to make this 200% bigger just so my dots don't look so chunky. It won't improve his, you know, face shape at all in terms of it won't increase the resolution of the picture, the original picture, but it means that when I'm drawing in it, I won't get just blocks as I draw. It's still pretty small. Let me resize it again. There we go. Now I can do some stuff to smooth this picture out, just for my reference. I'm going to go to adjust, add remove noise, and edge preserving smooth. And as I turn this up, you'll see, I'm using Jask Paint Shop Pro right now, it takes a lot of the jaggies out and allows for a cleaner shot. So, make sure we've got our paintbrush on. Yep. It's on. Okay, so looks like he might have been drinking or something. Squinty eyes generally mean they're sly. Here's his hair. And by zooming out, I'm using a Wacom tablet. By zooming out, it makes these gestures much easier to do in large strokes. You want to avoid a common beginner mistake of chicken scratches. Lots of little chicken scratches. They don't show up very well, and they sh make the whole picture feel wispy, thin, and unconfident. Use bolder strokes if you need to. Zoom out more and use an even bigger tool, a bigger pen. I'm going to exaggerate his jawline just a little bit. The 
problem with this is when I captured it and resized it I didn't take a I didn't make two layers so I'm just gonna have to uh, try a selection here see how much of this I can peel off let's go adjust brightness and contrast it's a little too dark and adjust hue saturation and lightness bring the saturation completely out of that and the brightness up just a bit yeah that's good now let's take this over to our picture template where we're doodling our different characters. So we got Mr. Sarah. Now we're going to do our buddy, the wagon driver. Make his head roughly the same size. Maybe a little bit bigger because he's kind of a he's kind of a lug. And let's let that let that one go and start doodling in on this guy. So come here, you big lug. I have my guy have a really bad broken nose. Working on the uh, wagon trains is hard work in this fantasy world, and it's pretty dangerous. Come on. My selection's not working, so I'm going to cut, edit, paste his new layer. Move it back over here. And I'm going to make sure that's below one of my other layers. So. I can draw on top of it and just disappear the under under layer. Let me delete that promoted selection. Okay, so here we've got Mr. Stallone. In the beginnings of a wagon driver lug. It'll be a little more free with his hair. Years. And these are all just momentary choices. I can always go back with undos because I'm doing this digital. If you're doing it with paper, you can always erase it or you can trace it and do it later. You can make him kind of a not very happy fellow. He's got more hair than I do. That's for sure. So, what are we left with? Let me get rid of our original. Well, let's make this guy a little beefier. A little younger, but still pretty. Pretty bony. I'm going to beef up his eyebrows a little bit. His head tilt's making him look really sympathetic. 
So I think I'm going to do a selection on him. And I'm going to promote it to a floating layer. Whoa. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Control Z, Control Z, Control X. and close. Alright, so control X, are we even on there? No. There we go. That's the layer we need. Control X. Edit paste as selection. Boom. Now we can go over here to this rotate tool and see it real time. It looks much less sympathetic now, which is good. We don't want our... This guy's going to be a, a big big trouble for Matthias. So if you've read the script, you know he ends up kind of flipping out on him and kicking him off the wagon train. So he's got to be a little hard. And since this is just storyboarding, we can go with adding some more details, like we could add a distinctive cap to him if we wanted to. We could copy him here. Let's go layer merge down. Select him again. And edit paste as selection. So we've got another duplicate. And let's see what he looks like with uh, like maybe a pirate cap or something. Cut off the top of his head. Not that I don't like him. We're just dressing. So let's give him some kind of a an interesting cap to make him stand out. Now we could go with, you know, a uh, bandana. I want to go more piratey. It's coming off as kind of a fez, though. Let's not do that one. These are all just ways to identify the character in the shot. So, and it may, if it describes it in the script, you really need to develop it here before you get to the point where you're drawing the storyboards where you get five panels in and then realize, oh, he's supposed to have a baseball cap or something. This is a fantasy world, so I'm going to go with some kind of a, a tricorn something. pretty standard Minuteman American, so we need to do something to make that a little uh, fantastical. Maybe make a horns on it or something. That's part of developing it. You want to, when you come up with an idea for this, you can play around with it. In fact, you probably should so you know what it looks like from different angles. And then run it by the director, run it by the art director, see what they think. If it doesn't work, scrap it, or add it to your collection. Let's draw his eyes down here. Draw a smaller version of him from the side, see what it looks like. This hat all the way. stripes here. This one looks a little higher than this one, but you get the idea. You can do all kinds of fantastic things with felt. Anyway, there's an example of how to research characters through Google Image Search. Find some actors. or It works for props. It works for everything. You want to make sure that each of your panels is recognizable at a glance. Each panel should tell them, tell the viewer, where the scene is set and who's the main character, what they're looking at. And we'll get into that later on, on different tutorials about layout and uh, the flow of the shots. But here's a good example for uh, 
developing your characters and doing some concept sketches of your characters so that you can incorporate them later on into storyboarding. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave comments. And that about does it for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I hope you practice what you've seen here. Go find a favorite screenplay online and break down one of your favorite film scenes without looking at the film into a, a thumbnails. Check out my thumbnailing video here on my channel. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel as I'm working on making recording and posting these tutorials a habit, and it would help if I have more people that are making me accountable for that. And check out my website at www.phoenixquillstudio.com. Oh, and follow me on Twitter at PQ underscore studio. Thank you for watching. This is David Jenkins signing off and hoping you pursue your brilliant ideas to their fullest and try not to get bogged down with perfection. Better to have it complete and imperfect than never done perfectly.